So most of the attention for the Phoenix Suns this offseason has been dedicated to what seems to be their two-headed monster with Devin Booker and DeAndre Ayton, who does not look like himself at all in this 2K roster. And it makes sense that these two have been getting praised so much. But I think we need to take some time to look at Eli Okobo, who the Suns drafted in the second round of this previous NBA draft. He played overseas, did not spend a year in college. But with Okobo, I think you have someone here at the point guard position at 6'3", who could end up being one of the better offensive point guards in the league. We have to start with his shooting. He is a very confident outside shooter. He's not just a spot-up guy. He has a bit of like a James Harden to him in terms of step backs and contested threes. And I would expect him to be a guy to hoist up some, some shots where you're occasionally like, I don't really know about that one. And then it goes right in. His percentages are uh, pretty uh, pretty damn good from outside overseas. The potential of him and Devin Booker together could really be something, a dynamic offense, if these two were able to share a lot of minutes together where either one of them could dribble. Because that is one thing with Okobo is he actually uh, grew up as a shooting guard and then has recently transitioned to a point guard. So he's uh, capable of playing off the ball. So he and Devin Booker can coexist well Maybe. We'll talk about it. But another thing with Okobo is he's pretty effective going to the rim, and I think it's something that he could take advantage of at times, because I don't know if every NBA defender is really going to be ready for his craftiness. His handle, while it needs improvement, it is still good enough to where he can break you down a little bit. He can occasionally get his Kyrie Irving on, not just in terms of uh, going in an isolation, but also the way he can finish. Uh, He'll sometimes go off the wrong foot. It could be a floater. It could be a, some weird angle. He has no problem with shooting against an athletic big man contesting at the rim. He is a fearless offensive player. And when you're talking about a guy who's got the outside game and he's got some decent inside stuff as well, then that is, of course, someone who can put up quite a few points in the NBA. As far as his abilities just as a natural point guard in terms of running the offense, making sure everybody's touching the ball and all that, he does need some work. Again, this is a guy who spent most of his life playing shooting guard, so it's not really ingrained in him to just do the things that you ask a point guard to do, where maybe he's not trying to make the home run play every possession as much as he's trying to make sure the offense is running correctly. Those are the kind of things he's going to have to learn. If we can get to some fears with him, well, the fear with him really comes from the stuff that he's good at, which is he likes to shoot the ball, and sometimes it's going to look good, he's going to score, and then other times he could be a bit like uh, Jamal Crawford, where, sure, even if the ball is actually going in, he's hijacking the offense way too much, his teammates are standing around, but this can also translate into some rough shots going up, and the percentage of these shots going in is, you know, pretty damn low. He does take more than a few mid-rangers, floaters, and part of this is because while he is athletic, he's not like Russell Westbrook, Damian Lillard, John Wall, Dennis Smith levels, so he's not always able to get that initial, like, first step past a defender, and then he has to make up for it with a shot that isn't really at the basket, and that's the kind of thing that can dip down your percentages, so to correct those things, it's going to be a matter of just being a little more crafty. I think, like I mentioned earlier, tightening up his ball handling just a little bit more could be something that could uh, get him away from some of those bad shots. And the thing that could get awkward here is, to me, Devin Booker may end up being a ball-dominant kind of a shooting guard where the point guard next to him should maybe be someone who's a bit more defensive and about three-point shooting. And that's not totally what Okobo is about. I mean, I'll talk about his defense in a minute. It's not a disaster, but it's not exactly glowing. So there's a chance that maybe with his shoot-first tendency, he would not be the perfect player to uh, go with Devin Booker in the backcourt in terms of fit. I mean, I think talent-wise, Okobo is pretty decent, but 
that's the type of thing where we're going to have to see. I mean, there's a reason Okubo fell to the second round. He's not a guy who teams just are shooing in to be some really good player. But the potential is definitely there, right? Now if we get to the defense, he does show signs of being okay. But there are also times where he looks like he's just not ready. Where he's not able to just always know what to do. Sometimes he'll blow an assignment or he'll not get over a screen effectively and it's a matter of well is he not strong enough or is it a matter of effort and and all that uh, only time will will tell really so he's not perfect he's definitely rough around the edges but i think within some of the frustrations that Eli Okubo could present to the phoenix suns moving forward there is a player in there who i think can be a pretty damn good scorer and if he can figure out the rest of his uh, his game then he could give Phoenix that third big-time offensive player next to uh, Booker and Aiton.